Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at a pretty cool mini PC from Minix that is completely fanless. This is their Z100 0DB. They call it a 0DB because it makes no noise in operation. And this is powered by an Intel N100 Alder Lake processor. It actually performs quite nicely and we're going to take a closer look at what this mini PC is all about in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that they sent us to the channel free of charge. However, they are not reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. They are not paying for this review and all opinions are my own. So let's get into it now and see what this mini PC is all about. Now the price point on this starts at around $215 for an eight gigabyte model and goes up from there based on configuration. I would suggest making sure you click on whatever coupon offers there might be on Amazon. Typically, mini PCs like this have some coupon attached to them that brings down the price. So be sure to check that box before you check out. Now, this one, as I mentioned, has an Intel N100 processor on board. We also have uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of NVMe storage. Now, you can very easily get into the uh, bottom of these just by unscrewing the bottom panel here. They've got four screws that come out super easy. They have rubber feet around them as well. And once you get inside here, first of all, you'll notice that there is a thermal pad coming off. Um, this just sits on this part of the motherboard, and I suspect that it is drawing some heat away from the other side of the board where the processor is. There's a big metal block here, I think, to dissipate some of that heat. Now, you'll notice here there's only a single RAM slot. That is par for the course on these Alder Lake devices. You don't need to have dual channel memory here apparently anymore to get the best performance out of it. Uh, this has a DDR4 3200 RAM module on board. You can have up to 32 gigabytes of RAM on this device. And then right here, you've got your NVMe storage. And over here, you have your Intel Wi-Fi board. Uh, this is an AX201 that supports Wi-Fi 6. So pretty nicely equipped here and pretty easy to upgrade. Now, what surprised me about this mini PC is how heavy it is. It is like a solid block of metal. It actually feels like a brick. It weighs just over two pounds or about 950 grams or so. So it's got a good build to it. And of course, the top here will get very warm when it's operating. And we'll talk more about its thermal performance a little later in the review. You will find a warning sticker on this when you first get it to advise you not to keep your hand here on the top because it does get hot, but it's not hot enough to fry an egg or something. But you will uh, notice a lot of heat up here and that is normal. That is how it gets rid of the heat from its operation. From a port standpoint, it's pretty decent. You've got a SD card reader right here. This is a Gen 2 USB-C port. Uh, so this will support 10 gigabit per second data modes. However, this does not support video out or power in. It is strictly a data port. Next to it, you've got another two 10 gigabit USB-A ports, a headphone microphone jack here, along with the power button. On the other side, you've got your uh, input for the power supply. It's got just one of these wall wart deals here. Not terribly long on the cable side, um, but it is functional and it should obviously work pretty well and we'll test it in operation here in a minute. Uh, you also have a pair of USB 2.0 ports. So this is where I would plug in your keyboards and mice. Over here, you've got 2.5 gigabit ethernet. We'll test that in a second as well. And then you have two HDMI outputs. These will run uh, at the HDMI 2.1 spec, so you can output 4K at 60 frames per second to two displays. And that is pretty much it for ports, but you do have these very nice big Wi-Fi antennas, and these are kind of necessary given how much metal is on the case here. So your Wi-Fi reception should be pretty decent on this one. Why don't we plug it in now and see how it performs? All right, we are all booted up now and running, and of course the machine is completely silent given that it is a fanless device. And what we're gonna do first here is run a speed test off of the ethernet. And as this runs, I will talk about the Windows 11 installation it comes with. This is running with a licensed copy of Windows 11 Pro. I did run a bunch of malware and virus scanners ahead of the review here, and nothing popped up. So it doesn't appear to be doing anything malicious. We've seen some issues with mini PCs lately that had some problems. This one appears to be just fine. Additionally, the workflow to getting yourself into Windows for the first time 
seems to follow the flow that you would get off of a regular retail version. So you go into your Microsoft account and log in, it's all good. So I think from a Windows perspective, this feels uh, just fine to me, and it's a very vanilla install with no bloatware. We can also see now that the Ethernet here is performing at the speed I would expect. So we're getting our two and a half gigabits of performance out of it. I did test the Wi-Fi a little bit earlier off of my Wi-Fi 6 access point that is pretty much above my head here in the ceiling. It was doing fine on the upstream, getting about 700 megabits per second, but the downstream was only in the three to 400 territories. So it didn't perform as well as I would like, especially given that we've got a, an Intel uh, Wi-Fi 6 board there, but it's adequate enough, I think, for what most consumers will do with it. But of course, Ethernet is always going to be the best option, and it appears as though you're going to get the full bandwidth out of this if you are intending to use this as a server. Let's take a look now at doing some basic work on it, and then we'll play a few games. All right, let's load up the Google Chrome browser here to start. We'll go to the NASA.gov homepage like we usually do. And what's amazing is how fast everything feels. We're running at 4K60 right now uh, out the HDMI, and I can apply to be an astronaut here in no time uh, because it is rendering web pages here very efficiently and quickly. Now, again, we are on the uh, Ethernet connection, but the Wi-Fi shouldn't be too much different here. So I'm pretty impressed here with uh, the performance that I'm seeing, at least for web browsing. We've got some video running here also. Again, all seamless, even at 4K, which is great. Uh, let's take a look now at YouTube and see how it handles some 4K 60 video files there. All right, so now we're playing some 4K 60 frames per second video from my YouTube channel. It is dropping a few frames here or there. Uh, once you get all of the interface out of the way, it seems to be playing back more smoothly. So this section of the video here is often one where there are a bunch of drop frames and it was able to keep up with that. So it looks like it's doing pretty well. I think if we were running at 1080p, we'd see no drop frames at all. Uh, but these Intel chips are often very good with processing and decoding video. And as we're seeing here, uh, running in the Chrome browser, this 4K 60 video is playing back quite well. So all is good on the media playback front and it should do pretty well with Netflix and some of the other services too. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 175, and that of course puts this ahead of the Intel N95 processor we saw on the Ace Magician N95 machine, along with a few other mini PCs we've looked at recently. All in great performance for web browsing. And if you're doing a lot of Office applications, it also seems to do well here with Microsoft Word and Excel. Uh, so all together, I think for basic tasks, it should do well and not make any noise on your desk while you're doing them. Uh, one other note is that they do have a Visa mount in the box, so you could mount it onto the back of a monitor as well if you wanted to get the box out of the way. Let's take a look now at some gaming. Now, these mini PCs are not known to be gaming powerhouses, but right now we are running Half-Life 2 here at 4K, and in some areas here, we're getting above 50 frames per second, but most of the time, we're at least running at 30 frames per second. And that's pretty remarkable given that this is a very low powered machine and it's able to render things this nicely. Now, you're not going to be running any modern AAA games at this uh, resolution or frame rate, but you could do some game streaming with this to uh, play some of those games over the internet. Uh, but for older stuff, this is going to work out I think quite well. Let's take a look now at some emulation. So now I've got some PlayStation 2 emulation going here with the PCSX2 emulator. And this game is called Burnout Revenge, one of my favorite racing games of all time. And as you can see here, we are running this game at the full 60 frames per second frame rate. Now I have done nothing to adjust the settings here. I just went with the default. So it is running at a lower resolution, pretty much the native resolution of the console. But this game is playable, perfectly playable, on very low-end hardware here. Again, another impressive feat uh, that these new Intel chips can achieve here. And I would say that the GameCube is also a good target here. So the Dolphin emulator should give you decent performance, again, keeping the settings within reason. And of course, all of the older consoles will play well here too. So if you're looking for something to replace your Raspberry Pi with for RetroArch and other uh, emulators, this is going to do, I think, very well. I would say you're not going to have much luck with the PS3 and some of the more modern consoles, but for 
a bulk of the 80s and 90s and early 2000s, you're going to have a great experience here emulating things silently on this machine. Let's take a look at some benchmarks and then we'll talk about power consumption. And on the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark test, we got a score of 362. Again, not a graphical powerhouse here, but for the price and power consumption, I think it's doing pretty well. We also ran the 3D Mark stress test, and there we got a passing score of 99.8%, which means that when you put this under load, it's likely not going to throttle down at all. So that big, heavy heat sink that they built into this thing is doing its job. And after all that gaming, it is a nice hand warmer right now because it is quite warm, but it does work and the system does perform consistently even when you're doing some tasks that will strain the processor a bit. And speaking of straining the processor a bit, I found the max power consumption out of this is about 23 watts or so when you're doing uh, something that's really taxing everything 100%. When it's sitting idle, it's around 10 watts. So again, not very much power being consumed out of this, but the performance is pretty good for basic computing work, but also basic server work too. Speaking of servers, let's take a look and see how Linux runs on this. All right, so here we go. We've got the latest version of Ubuntu running here, and all of the hardware was detected successfully. We are running at 4K60. We're playing back video here without issue, even when I'm moving the windows around here. Video, audio, Wi-Fi, Ethernet, everything got detected properly. That's something we typically see with these mini PCs. They do just as well with Linux as they do uh, with Windows. So if you are looking to run a little Docker server or something, this might be fun for a home lab. And of course, you've got all this great open source software free of charge that you can use, like LibreOffice, where you can get a spreadsheet and everything else put together here as well. And altogether, a very good Linux experience here, in addition to the Windows side, so you can uh, have quite a bit of computing fun here if you're looking for a project computer. And for the price point, I think this is a really good value. The system runs great, it's totally silent, there doesn't seem to be any compromises uh, due to its uh, fanless architecture here, so it's just a nice machine and something that I am very comfortable recommending if you're looking for something that doesn't cost all that much and provides great performance and compatibility. That's going to do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Budley, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Steve Green, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.